night, it's Hannah. Thanks for watching. Okay, hey friends, today I have a project updates video for you. It has been a while since I've talked about my projects, like maybe three weeks. Um, last week I did a Q&A video, which was super fun for me. <laughs> um, and I got a lot of fun comments, so I hope it was fun for you as well. I'm definitely going to do another one to answer the rest of the questions because I had so many that I did not get to. And they were all really fun. Um, so anyway, if we haven't met, I'm Hannah. I'm a mom and a knitter. I live in North Carolina. Um, I like to make garments. Sometimes I design garments for kids and I share my projects here um, and on Instagram. All my links are in the description. So if you wanna buy my patterns or find me on Instagram or join my email test knitter list, those are down there. Okay, let's get started. My first finished object is the sweater that I'm wearing. It's a little, ooh, I think I forgot to weave in an end here. <laughs> It's a little dark, so it's hard to see the color, um, but this is my Calm Down Sweater Test Knit for Lily Kate France of Lily Kate Makes. And um, if you have watched my previous videos, you will know I ran into an issue with the sweater and the dye lots. I feel like you can't tell. Oh, no, wait, I can tell. I can tell. Um, so I had gotten like five or six balls on a trip. And I thought that would be enough for a DK weight sweater. But then when I saw this pattern, it's oversized. And so it just needed more yardage. So anyway, I ordered two more balls from a different place. They were not the same dye lot. And so I really noticed <laughs> um, when I was knitting stockinette across the body. And it was like very noticeable to me, um, at least. And I felt like it was noticeable to you guys too. Um, and I, I got a lot of kind comments on what to do about it and all that. So what I settled on was finishing the body with the main dye lot that I had and doing all of the ribbing with the second dye lot. And I think that that has, that has done it. <laughs> it's also not as sunny today as it was in the last video I filmed with this, but um, you can kind of see, focusing on me, but I really do think that that made a big difference. The only thing is, I did want to knit the body a little bit longer since it is like really oversized here and in the sleeves. I wanted it to be like full. Sorry, I got scooted. <laughs> I wanted it to be like really long as well, but it's actually only like an inch shorter than the recommended full length. And so it's not really cropped at all. It's just like not longer than full length, I guess. Um, but on me, it's definitely a full length sweater. I mean, it comes below my hips. So it is what it's supposed to be. <laughs> um, but anyway, the pattern was wonderful. I love this V-neck detail. I feel like that is the star of the show. <laughs> it's a double knit. I never have done a double knit on a just like non-cardigan, but this was lovely. Working with the designer has been wonderful. Lots of great test knitters in the group. And I love seeing their projects. I think a few of us picked the same yarn and we've just been using different colors. This was the recommended yarn, Dubu Room Natural Ulysse. This color, I don't remember. I'll put it in the description. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm using the recommended yarn, all of that. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed working with this yarn. It's sort of like a semi-woolen spun is what it says. And so it feels very light, but also very warm. It's perfect for right now. It's probably also perfect for the, like really winter <laughs> but here where I am it's like the days are like 50 Fahrenheit and so yeah I think this is quite quite nice for right now I have already worn it a few times out and I really like it this is my first like is this is my first v-neck garment or at least my first v-neck full sweater I'm just not really a v-neck person until like today <laughs> My sister said, oh, she was like, are you in your v-neck era? Because um, I think I'm a little bit scarred from like having to wear like v-neck polos and that kind of thing for, for school. And I like seeing myself in pictures and all of that. I'm like, no, never again. <laughs> I am not a v-neck person. But seeing this, I really like it. And I think it's just because of the layered look and I feel like I, that's everywhere I see so I think I need another one <laughs> um which I'll talk about in a little bit but anyway 
I do think that the v-necks are growing on me. I really like this and I think it's because it's so overemphasized that I can wear like a crew neck underneath. Um, but yeah, I really like it. I recommend this pattern a lot. I think it's coming out the first week in March, maybe March 5th or 6th, um, but you can follow her on Instagram and, and it'll tell you. It's the sister to the Calm Down Cardigan, which I've seen quite a few people knit and love and so that's why I wanted to make this. It has saddle shoulder details, which mine keeps slipping back on my shoulder, but has that and they go down the whole sleeve which is really cute and they're also on the body as well so lots of fun details just very cute and I like it a lot and I feel like I'm gonna wear it a lot and I think it's gonna be really wearable because it is so sturdy but also classic which are good things right now for me <laughs> so I yeah I, I'm really happy with it and feels like a win even though it wasn't quite as long as I wanted I feel like you can't see the dye a lot that much and yeah, it worked out. Okay, um, I do have another finished object. I'm gonna count it as finished even though it's one thing I have to do. This little horsey, um, she needs eyes. So I just have strings in there right now where they're supposed to go. I didn't use safety eyes because this is going to an infant and safety eyes are notoriously unsafe. Um, so I'm just going to embroider some eyes on, but I need to find some black yarn. So yeah, this is Nilla the Unicorn horse version. So yeah, I just, I really love it. <laughs> it's going to a little boy and um, his mom has horses. So I'm hoping that, um, yeah, she'll like it. I just like love the little, added a little forelock since there's no unicorn horn on this one like Nilla has. And got a little tail, little mane, kind of like shredded some of the yarn so that, or not shredded, but just like combed it so that it would have a little more texture. Yeah, I'm really happy with this. <laughs> I think it's really cute. Um, I'm gonna be giving it away maybe this week or next week. And so I need to get some cute pictures of it. But the other day when I finished it, I just sat it on the couch and then my husband like sat down and he was just sitting next to it. And it was really funny because they're just like both sitting on the couch. <laughs> um, anyway, yes, I used Malbrigo Rios and the colors are Dulce de Leche and Ivory. And yeah, that's pretty widely available yarn, but I did get it at a local yarn shop at the beach in North Carolina in Swansboro. Um, and it was just fun to go and go to a new shop. So I've talked about that before. There's a short on here and I think I talked about it on Instagram too, but yeah, little cutie, just need some eyes. But yeah, I, um, I said before I was going to make a comparison of how long it took me to make this versus how long it took me to make a Mushin Friends. Um, if that's something you're interested in or like, I'm not going to talk negatively about either because I really don't have anything negative to say. It's really just personal preference on if you prefer like fingering weight, worst of weight, like how much detail you want. So let me know if you're interested in hearing about that. Um, I feel like I have made a few, I've also made some Susan B. Anderson patterns which I feel like maybe you're more in the middle. So I've made a few different kinds. And so if you're interested in like time comparison, materials, costs, all of that, please let me know. I'd love to talk about it. <laughs> but yeah, I just think he's really cute. And I like how he's like floppy, you know? He's just like very snuggly. Okay, anyway. <laughs> um, usually, actually, side note, usually I stuff these with yarn scraps, um, but I just use regular stuffing since it's going to like a new home but if I were to make some for my son and stuff I just use my yarn scraps because that's a great way to use them up and it does give more of like the floppy feel okay now my works in progress I have my vertices unite and then something new I'm casting on um okay so I finished the first section of my vertices unite it looks like this honestly it could be a little I don't know <laughs> Could be a little scarf scarflet right now um but yeah so this is it started up here and yeah that's the bottom part that i just finished uh so the construction is really interesting this is a funny shape i thought for some reason i thought it was gonna be like rectangular or something or i don't know triangular it's not any of those things it's very asymmetrical um but oops that's the back it feels so like just squishy and soft right now that I, it does make me want to work on it more. <laughs> okay, I'll admit, I did find it a little monotonous because it's just garter and it's fingering weight. So it's not going super quickly. 
Although I wouldn't say it's my slowest project ever. <laughs> There's been slower, but I do feel like it is, it's more of a like meditative knit as they say, which sometimes I wonder if that's another word for kind of boring, but I'm still enjoying myself. You know what I mean? Like it is kind of boring, but I'm still really liking it. And I wouldn't be like, oh, I don't want to work on that. That's so boring. I'd be like, oh yeah, I need to be watching a show that I really like because this is something boring I can work on. I think that's how I view it more. But since I finished that, I get to move on to a new section and I'll show you my color planning sheet <laughs> that I still, I keep it with my project. So I know what's coming next, but next is this section. So it's very nice on this. This is available on his project page if you're planning a Vertices Unite. It's by Stephen West. Um, so I started here and it shows you the direction that you knit in. And then it has another arrow here for section two, the colors you use and then which direction you knit in. So you'll be knitting, I'll be knitting down from the side of this first section to make section two. And that will be colors C and D, which is my green and blue which are these colors. I don't know how I feel about the two stripe sections being worked like back to back just because, I don't know, stripes isn't as much my thing. I do like stripes, but I don't have that many stripes, I guess. So having more stripes feels like a lot. I'm just enjoying the process. I'm going with it. Um, we'll see how it goes. It's gonna feel really busy, I think at first because it doesn't have all the other colors that are just solid sections. That's okay. I love all the ones I've seen. It's gonna be all right. <laughs> I will update you. I said I was gonna make the larger one and I'm definitely making the smaller one. After I hit the stitch count for the smaller one, I was like, okay, good. Yeah, I'm gonna make the smaller one because this is taking a long time <laughs> and I think I'm ready to like move on. So I'm making the smaller one, but honestly this feels like pretty good size anyway. Like I said, I could wear it as like a little whatever. So. I, I feel like it will be good. The small size will hopefully still be good for me. Um, but yeah, this is navy blue from Knitting for Olive, Merino. And then this is an olive green, which is sadly discontinued, I believe, because I tried to buy more a couple years ago and yeah, it was discontinued. And then the colors I've used so far are lamb and plum rose is the pink. I actually have quite a bit left, so I do get to use both of the colors again, which is good because I don't want to have this much left of it. <laughs> I was hoping to use this as like a scrap busting project. So it's like half and half at this point. Um, okay, there's my Vertices Unite. Please let me know if you're making one too because I know a lot of people are. This is my first one. And gosh, I think half of it is the yarn. It feels so good. This makes me want to garter knitting for olive merino pullover. Although nothing in me wants to knit that because right now, <laughs> in the future maybe, but this took me a long time because, um, I don't know, I guess it's just smaller needles and more oversized than I'm used to, but I'm ready <laughs> for some bigger gauge. Speaking of, I have something that I swatched last night and it is so lovely to me. Um, it's skewing a little bit more white, but it's definitely more pink here my house <laughs> um but this is a swatch of this is knitting for olive heavy merino in the color marzipan and this is woolberry fiber co berry surrey and the color is october and it's surrey alpaca and silk and it's the woolberry fiber co collector's edition so they did like a best of kind of thing in the fall and they got this which is a little bit darker I think it's my lighting, but it's a little bit lighter here. It's darker on the screen. Um, but yeah, it's just so beautiful. I haven't caked it up yet because I didn't know for sure if I was going to start this project, but after knitting this swatch, I do think I'm going to start this project. <laughs> I don't know. I'm really torn though on what to knit with it. Um, this is kind of like my first, I think this will be my first sweater with hand dyed yarn. You can correct me if I'm wrong, if you know my projects. I'm trying to think. I don't think I've used hand dyed yarn for a sweater before, so this feels extra special. And I'm torn between two sweaters. I kind of want a little texture just for knitting wise, like for my own enjoyment in the process of, but so there's one sweater that's more like that. I'll put it up. <laughs> this is from the book Ready Set Raglan by Pom Pom. And then the other one is more of the product and it's purely influenced by this sweater I'm wearing and this t-shirt underneath 
because I feel like I could see myself wearing this a lot in the spring, in the fall, in the winter. <laughs> um, I'll put it over here and then it's the Harlow sweater v-neck and um, mostly influenced by Marlene of um, Marlene Knits and then also Knits by Mandy. She made one too and she wore it constantly and so I feel like it's very wearable which I like. But this one was influenced by Emily Curtis. Um, she made this like skittly sweater one, which I feel like fits the vibe of this variegated Surrey. So please help me decide. <laughs> um, I don't really know what to choose. I know I was talking to my sister about it. She was like, I'm just being honest. You're not a V-neck person. Every time I try and give you a V-neck or I'm like, oh, that's so cute. You should wear that. You're like, no, I'm not a V-neck person. Um, would it be crazy to knit two V-neck sweaters back to back? I think like she was just being honest, like Hannah, will you, like I'm trying to be a voice of reason here. It's beautiful, but will you wear it because it's a V-neck? Like, I don't know, this is what I need to hear. <laughs> but do I need another crew neck raglan? Because I have a lot of those too. And I think it feels extra like weighty because this yarn does feel so special to me. October is like my favorite month of the year. I I just love it and so yeah, I don't know. I October just feels very special. And so I got the yarn. It feels very special. It's hand dyed, so it costs more. <laughs> Plus I'm holding it with something. Also costs more. So that just feels like a lot to me. Um, for my like own knitting practice. It feels above the average cost. It feels above the average like emotional input. And so I think that's why I'm having such a hard time and I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> Um, but I swatched for the Harlow sweater v-neck last night. I met Gage. Well, that's not true. It's about a half a stitch off on the stitch count, but the row gauge is on and otherwise the stitch gauge is on, which is actually really good for me. My only concern is because it's already oversized. Half a stitch is, can be significant when your stitches, when your gauge is only 19 stitches. I'm not super concerned about that half a stitch. If it was a fingering weight sweater, I would not be concerned at all. <laughs> but since it's 19 stitches, then it's 19 and a half. Like how much will that half stitch increase the bust circumference since it's already oversized? So I think that's something where I could probably go like this <laughs> and it would be fine. But it would affect the drop of the V-neck because of the row gauge like in this section. So that is something I just need to think about if I were to just try and go like this <laughs> to fix the, the stitch count or the stitch gauge. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but that's actually really close for my gauge, um, only being off half a stitch. So I don't wanna be naive and think it wouldn't affect it, but I do want to say that's like pretty close for, for me because I don't always meet like both of them. Sometimes I'm just on for the stitch count or stitch gauge and then my row gauge is like way off. So hitting almost both of them <laughs> felt like a big deal to me. Um, okay, then that's all I have for works in progress. Um, acquisitions, have I bought any yarn? No, I don't think I have. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about our life lately. Um, if you want to listen, if you don't, happy knitting and I hope you have a great weekend. But since I don't have any acquisitions, I'll just tell you what I've been up to. Um, my son had a birthday last week and we spent a special day at the kids museum. We went to the butterfly house. He loved it. We did this last year on his birthday too. And so it was really special and it was so kind. He was so excited about it. And um, my mom went as well. So she was buying tickets and um, like they told him it was his birthday and he was excited and all this. And so the man gave him free admission, which was just so kind, like so sweet. Um, but yeah, he was super pumped about it. He loves being three. He is just like eating it up. He's told everyone it was his birthday, like in the cutest way, right? Any three-year-old just being happy about their birthday is adorable. Um, but yeah, so he's been loving it. We had a big birthday party for him at a park and all his friends were there. Not all of them, some of them were sick because that's just how it goes when you're three. But a lot of his friends were there. Um, they got to play on the playground and eat cake. And my husband organized like a um, relay race and so there's just like kids on the basketball court just like running and um, all trying to like score and throw frisbee and you know 
kick the soccer ball into the goal and it was quite fun. I think my husband was like in his element directing kids and <laughs> cheering and having a high five station and this little baseball station. So it was like sports-ish themed. My son has quite a few interests, um, but he really likes sports as well. So yes, we had some fun this past weekend and that's kind of where all my energy has been lately, um, has been like just getting ready for his birthday. All the things that come with being three, um, if you have kids or grandkids, you know that <laughs> it's a time. It's definitely a time and he loves being three, but yeah, there's just a lot, a lot going on. And so anyway, we had a party for him and there was a hole for a second just my elbow peeking out <laughs> um and let's see what else have we been up to um i've been working on a class for my environmental educator certification online and it's been on um, recycling and composting so that has taken up a lot of my mental energy but it's been great i've learned so much about <laughs> municipal waste and um all of those things so that's been really good and let's see what else have we been up to oh we're taking a trip next week so I may or may not have a video for you, um, but we are going to visit my grandparents and cousins and my uncle and all, kind of all the family that isn't like my mom and dad um, here and they everyone else lives in California. So we are going to California for a little bit to visit and um, I think that will be really nice. It's really, really special um, for Ollie to get to spend time with his great grandparents and just see what their life is like and meet his other cousins and like, I don't know what those are, my cousin's kids and um, his uncle. And yeah, it's it's really special. We went about a year and a half ago and visited and that was the last time we had seen them. Um, everyone's just getting older and it's hard. Um, it's just really important to me that we are able to, to see them and spend time with them and um, for them to enjoy it and then also for my son to enjoy it but honestly I think it's like the highlight for them and so I'm really excited we've been calling a lot and talking to them and um just getting ready and trying to get excited and they have horses and I've been trying to slowly warm Ollie up to the idea of trying to ride a horse at my grandparents because I know his other his cousin is going to and his other cousin that lives there is definitely going to <laughs> I don't want him to feel disappointed if he doesn't I'm totally fine if he doesn't want to ride the horse though. I didn't really ever want to ride them as a kid. That's why my sister rode them and I did not, but I don't want him to be disappointed. So I'm slowly trying to warm him up to that. We'll see. I'll give you an update if you're interested on if he rode a horse or not. Um, but yeah, I think it will be really special, but I know my content on Instagram has just like slowed down so much. And so it will probably be even slower. <laughs> um, but I'll probably put some, put a few pictures on there. Um, but I'm thinking I'm going to bring this project as like a special thing. I do not like flying. <laughs> so I'll probably be like, you know, containing my son for half. And then when I switch with my husband, I'm going to be like furiously knitting with my headphones on, just like <laughs> trying to make it to the end of the flight. Um, so maybe I will make some progress that I'll have to share um, when I get home. But yeah. I think this is what I might bring. I know it's a sweater's quantity. <laughs> I won't bring the whole thing. I'll just probably bring like one of these. But yeah, I think that's all. That's like a little life update, what we've been up to. Um, it feels like equally a ton of things and also not that much. <laughs> um, but yeah, the flowers are starting to turn here. It's been really beautiful to see spring, all the blooms, anyway. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. I hope you have a lovely weekend and happy knitting.